This is the story, the yarn, the tale of who framed Roger Rabbit. Please, read along with me in your book. You'll know it's time to turn a page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. Most people think it's simple being a cartoon character. They say it's a breeze, a snap, a piece of cake. <laughs> That's a laugh. And I should know, I'm Roger Rabbit. King of the comics, guru of grins, sultan of smiles. You see, cartoon characters, toons they call us, are really just actors. We live in a place called Toontown, and we gotta work like anybody else. Take me, for instance. I spend most of my time on movie sets at the Maroon Cartoon Studios. My boss is R.K. Maroon. While I was on the set one day, he was upstairs talking to a detective, a gumshoe, a private eye named Eddie Valiant. Okay, Valiant, here's the deal. Roger Rabbit's wife, Jessica, has been getting friendly with another guy. I want you to look into it, get some pictures to wise the rabbit up. Forget it, Maroon. I don't work in Toontown. You don't have to. She sings at a place called the Ink and Paint Club. Tune review, strictly humans only. Eddie looked into it all right. He went to the club that night and caught Jessica's act. When the curtain opened, he was surprised, astonished, stupefied. Jessica wasn't a rabbit at all. What she was was beautiful. She's married to Roger Rabbit? After the show, he sneaked into an alley behind the club and got out his camera. He took pictures of Jesse, the light of my life, the apple of my eye, the cream in my coffee, playing patty cake with another man. Eddie was surprised to see who it was. Well, what do you know? It's Marvin Acme. Marvin Acme made trick movie props like hand buzzers and whoopee cushions. Oh, and one more thing. He was the owner of Toontown. When Eddie showed me the pictures in R.K. Maroon's office, I could hardly bear to look. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. I shan't believe it. Believe it. I took the pictures myself, you screwy toon. Here, have a soda and calm down. I was so upset that I forgot what always happens when I drink a soda. Before I knew it, my head had turned into a giant steam whistle. I let out a blast and rocketed through the window. Eddie thought the job was over, finished, kaput. But the next morning, the police showed up and took him to see Judge Doom. What the judge told him was absolutely astounding. Last night, someone dropped a safe on Marvin Acme. It had to be the rabbit. When I catch him, here's what I'll do. His weasel helpers backed up a truck with a vat of turpentine. The judge held a toon shoe over it and dipped it in. The shoe melted into a puddle of paint. My knees get wobbly just thinking about it. Eddie got a tip that Acme's will was missing. Not only that, the will left Toontown to us Toons. Eddie figured if he could find Acme's will, it might point to the real culprit and get yours truly off the hook. <laughs> Smart guy, that Eddie. When he got back to his office, he took a look, a glimpse, a gander at the patty cake picture, and he noticed something. Hey, there's the will. It's right in Acme's back pocket. That's when I popped up. You've got to help me, Eddie. What are you doing here? The police are looking for you. I didn't do it, I swear. Last night I went to see Jesse in the dressing room, but she was gone. I even found some blank paper and wrote her a love letter. I'm innocent, Eddie. Please help me. Yeah, yeah, I'll see what I can do. 
I gave him a big smack on the lip. How can I repay you? For starters, don't ever kiss me again. That night, Eddie sneaked into Jessica's dressing room to look for the will. He heard a noise, then everything went black. The next thing he knew, he was sitting in a chair, looking up at Judge Doom, Jessica, and the weasels. Searching for something, Mr. Valiant? Yeah, Acme's will. Seen it? He had no will. Take him downtown, boys. Downtown Toontown. Yeah. Eddie's face went pale. Oh, no. Not Toontown. <laughs> The weasels got some paint cans and brushes and took Eddie into the Toontown Tunnel. You know, Valiant, in Toontown, we got that way of handling people who are big-headed. A few minutes later, Eddie came shooting out of the tunnel. His head was painted in the shape of a toon pig. Ooh, after Eddie scrubbed off the toon head, he found me in a restaurant entertaining the folks. He grabbed me by the ears and yanked me into a back room. I'm risking my neck, and you're singing and dancing? Well, Eddie, my philosophy is, if you don't have a sense of humor, you're better off dead. Just then, we heard a commotion out front. It was Judge Doom. I know the rabbit's here. This should bring him out. No tune can resist it. He knocked on the wall. Shave and a haircut. Finally, I couldn't stand it anymore. Okay, okay. Two bits. The judge held my trial right there. Roger Rabbit, you are guilty as charged. I sentence you to the dip. Oh, no, the dip. My goose is cooked. My hash is slung. My fate is complete. That's when Eddie spoke up. Doesn't the prisoner get a last request? I think he wants a soda. I do? Yes, you do. He handed me the soda, and I took a sip. <laughs> Just like before, my head turned into a giant whistle and let out a blast. While everybody held their ears, Eddie and I ran outside. I spotted a pal of mine, Eddie the Cab. We hopped in, but Eddie couldn't figure out the controls. What do I do? Benny raced his engine. Nothing except hang on to your hat. A few minutes later, we were home free, out of the woods, in like Flynn. Benny dropped us off in front of a movie theater. If you ever need a lift, just stick out your thumb. We hid in the theater where a cartoon was playing. The crowd was cracking up, going wild, rolling in the aisles. Everybody but Eddie. Hey, Eddie, how come you never laugh? You want to know? My brother was bumped off in Toontown. A toon dropped a piano on him, then ran off. No one's seen him since. You must hate me. No wonder you yanked my ears. I don't hate you, and I'm sorry I yanked your ears, okay? Now I understood why he was such a sourpuss all the time. Eddie was suspicious of R.K. Maroon, so we drove to the studio to visit him. Eddie went upstairs, and I watched the parking lot. I was supposed to honk the horn if I saw anything fishy, cockeyed, out of line. A minute later, I heard a noise, but before I could do anything, somebody clobbered me over the head with a frying pan, then dumped me into the trunk of a car. Upstairs, Eddie had convinced R.K. Maroon to talk. It's not what you think, Valiant. A company called Cloverleaf Oil wanted to buy my land, but only if they could get Toontown. I had you take those pictures of Acme so he'd sell his land. Okay, it was a lousy thing to do, but I didn't drop a safe on his head. Well, what's Cloverleaf gonna do with Toontown? Drill for oil? Worse than that. The plan is to... There was a shot, and Maroon fell to the floor. 
Eddie looked out the window and saw Jessica hot-footing it to her car. He followed her to Toontown, where he found the car parked next to Acme's gag factory. The trunk popped open, and yours truly peeked out. What happened, Eddie? One minute, I'm about to whistle. The next thing I know, it's good night, nurse. That was no nurse. It was your wife. He handcuffed me to his steering wheel. I'm going after her. You're staying right here. When he left, I started the car. Maybe I'll go for a spin. <laughs> Eddie walked into an alley and saw a dark shape. Suddenly, Jessica's voice rang out. Look out, Eddie. He dove to the ground, and a bullet whizzed past his head. The dark figure ran off, holding a gun. It was Judge Doom. Jessica came up beside Eddie. I've been following him all night. He's the one who got R.K. Maroon. Lady, I guess I had you pegged wrong. She told Eddie the whole story. You see, Valiant, Judge Doom was behind it all. He wanted Toontown. He wanted the will, too, but Acme left that with me. Funny thing about that will, it turned out to be just a blank piece of paper. Good old Marvin. A joker to the end. But the joke was on them. A gang of weasels blocked the alleyway, then hauled them off to Acme's gag factory. What they didn't know was that I was right behind them. <laughs> I managed to slip out of the cuffs and sneak inside where Doom was giving Valiant the scoop, the poop, the lowdown. If the will doesn't turn up in 15 minutes, Toontown is legally mine. You see, I am Cloverleaf Oil. He brought out a huge dip cannon. Once I own Toontown, I'm using this to dip it off the face of the earth. Dip Toontown? It was too terrible to believe. I decided it was time to bite the bullet, hit the beach, okay the corral. I dove into the plumbing and shut out of its rain, sending the weasels flying. I turned to Judge Doom. You think you can get away with this? Ah, we tunes may be idiotic, but we're not stupid. While I was yapping away, one of Doom's buddies pushed the stack of bricks off the rafters right above me. Jesse hurried over. Roger, say something. Look at the pretty stars. <laughs> they tied Jesse and me to a big hook and turned on the dip cannon. Then the judge grabbed an oxygen tank and started sucking oxygen. He stretched and changed, blowing up like a balloon. Eddie staggered back. Holy Toledo, you're a toon. Not just any toon, Eddie. Recognize me? I dropped a piano on your brother, and now it's your turn. Doom turned his hand into a giant buzzsaw and started forward. As he did, Eddie grabbed the dip cat and pointed it toward Judge Doom. A minute later, the judge was just a smear of pain. When Eddie untied us, Jessica gave me a hug. I figured it was time to read her the love letter. Dear Jesse, I'm Marvin Acme of Sound Mind and Body. <laughs> hey, it's the will. Acme wrote it with disappearing, reappearing ink. <laughs> and now it's coming back. It was all there. Acme had left Toontown to us tunes. Afterwards, when we walked outside, the sun was just coming up over Toontown. <laughs> I grinned. So, Eddie, you think you're gonna keep your sense of humor? Does this answer your question? Yeah. Eddie, can I ask just one favor? Sure, kid. Go ahead. 